What if we told you it was possible for one of you to hit diamond in just a few months by implementing a couple of simple tricks? Nothing too crazy, just stand in high value locations and look at your map a little bit more. Sounds too good to be true. Well, that's exactly what we set out to prove in our latest episode when Mr. White embarked on his journey to climb out of the depths of hell into the glory ranks of Valorant. The problem? Most players don't realize the simple things that are holding them back, and it results in them being hard stuck for hundreds of hours. We found the solution though. According to our studies with the advice that we've given Mr. White, he is actually ranking up twice as fast as the average player. And it's not going to stop today. In this video, we're breaking down a beginner habit that will instantly cause you to overwhelm your enemies, and if you're lucky, like in Mr. White's case, maybe even force surrender votes. Remember that we're also uploading every single coaching session that we've had with Mr. White in full to our Road to Diamond course, so you can follow along on the exact same journey that he is on right now. If you want to see the same gains, all you have to do is main Killjoy and play 2-3 to three games a day. There's actually three other habits that we discussed with Mr. White during this episode, so if you want immediate access to that, be sure to check it out using the link in the description below for a discount. We also offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, so if you don't climb, you don't pay. Our goal is to show you exactly what you need to do every step of the way to carry yourself out of Elo Hell. All of you are capable of it, all you need is a little bit of the right guidance. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video though. To start out, what is this master habit that is causing players to surrender games? In the background, take note of Mr. White in these rounds as he is massively shutting down the enemy's B main push and tell me if you can spot the habit. What he's doing here is actually so far beyond what I would expect from a silver player, but it's exactly what he needs to be doing. This habit makes it incredibly difficult for the enemy team to take gunfights on him, and it also makes it so if he does die, he will still gain value. If you're able to guess it, good on you. The habit that Mr. White is using that we taught him in our course is the mirror technique. Notice how during this pistol round, when the Reina starts to swing wide, Mr. White starts to swing wide with her. And when she backs up, Mr. White backs up with her. During these rounds, Mr. White is not exactly playing how you'd expect a Killjoy to play. Normally, Killjoy wants to play behind her setups and swing off her turret or alarm bot. But in this case, Mr. White is playing in front of his setups, basically rendering them useless. So why is this good? Because the only thing more important than his utility is actually his teammates. One of the biggest complaints we'll often hear from players is that their teammates are constantly holding them back. Their teammates never talk to them and will constantly just swing the spawn barrier and die every round. And the thing is, they're kind of right. This happens a lot. Your teammates are constantly doing dumb stuff that will get them killed. I often explain Low Elo Valorant as a race to see if you can get enough value in the round before your teammates all get themselves killed. If you end up in a 1v5, you will lose. There's just not really any way around it. Sure, you can sometimes clutch up 1v5, but for the most part, not even a Radiant player is going to be able to do that every single round. This is why you need to make sure that when your teammates die, you're getting value out of it. That's why the mirror technique is so valuable, because you see your teammates about to throw their life away, and you're at least there to grab their trade. So like, this is like an immediate red flag that I want to just kind of ingrain in your brain. I can't remember if we mentioned it in the last VOD, but if you ever see a teammate fighting like this, you should always just, just swing with them immediately. It should be your instinct to, my teammate's fighting, let me go fight with them. Um, if you build up that instinct, I guarantee you'll rank up very quickly. But uh, you need to you need to be more conscious of what's going on right here because you're kind of out of it, clearly, right? And then your Sova's going to do the exact same thing. So notice how your Sova's going to start taking this fight, and you aren't going to do anything about it either. So One Sova, he's shooting and you're opening up your map, you gotta ping this location. But don't do not do that, just fight with the guy. Uh, you'll be a lot better off, so. The cool thing about this too is that it doesn't exactly require too much teamwork. All it requires is for one of the players swinging to make a conscious decision to swing with their teammate. Since it only requires one of you to make that decision, that means that you can apply this in any elo in any game. All it requires is for you to watch your teammates and mirror their movements. When they peek right, you peek right too. When they peek left, you peek left too. This habit of mirroring your teammates is both incredibly simple, but also stupidly effective. We have to teach this technique constantly to new players as well, so don't feel bad if you aren't good at this yet. Here's an example of me coaching another player on the exact same thing. So like in this situation right here, when you're in a 2v1, you need to understand the game state. Your goal to win this round is that you guys swing this guy together, and you fight him 2v1 and you win the round, right? Um, but what ends up happening is you swing this angle without communicating a thing, and you end up losing the 1v1, and then he ends up killing your Phoenix because he's the silver player, and he, they lose 1v1s, right? It just happens, right? Now, don't get me wrong. This Phoenix, it, he probably should have swung with you. He probably he should have been thinking the same thing, theoretically, right? But he's a silver player. You can't expect him to think that same thing. So it's, it's your responsibility in the situation to say, okay, we are in a 2v1. 
I need to swing with this guy and I need to fight with him so that we can secure this round. Because I guarantee you, if you had swung this angle with this Phoenix, you win this round. But you didn't, and now you're going to end up losing it because he, he loses the 1v1, which happens. People lose 1v1s, right? Immediately, what a lot of you are probably thinking was, well, King, he tried to swing with this Phoenix, but the Phoenix didn't peak. And that's why this is called the mirror technique. You don't want to lead the way on the swing like this generally in low elo because you can't count that your teammate is going to follow up on you. To mirror a teammate effectively, you need to be playing behind your teammate so you can see their motions. Notice how when Mr. White is mirroring his Reyna, the player is in front of him. Every time she moves, he can instantly respond by moving with her. If you're the player in front though, you're generally relying on some sort of feedback from your teammate to tell you if they're close enough or not to trade you out. As you could imagine, this is an issue because your teammates will not give you feedback. In this round, take a look at how Mr. White pushes in immediately with his team onto site as they aggress, and then as he sees his omen teleport into heaven, he continues to follow him up. Plenty of players in this situation would just watch their omen push into heaven alone and then complain about him throwing, but because Mr. White is practicing the mirror technique that we taught him in our course, he saw the omen making a play and instantly pushed up to help him. Then, after the omen died, he fell back to play off of his next teammate. Here's how it looks again. Notice how Mr. White is mirroring the Sova in front of him every step of the way up into market. When Sova walks up, Mr. White walks up behind him. He's letting Sova lead the way, but he's mirroring his movements so that any fight they take, they take together. Eventually, we end up pushing spawn and deviating a bit, but if you were to just watch how Mr. White is playing off the Sova here, you likely wouldn't guess that he's a silver player. And notice how none of this is really agent dependent either. Sure, he's playing Killjoy in all these clips, so he's not exactly going to be entering all the time, but you can mirror your teammates on any agent. We're calling it the mirror technique here, but really all this is, is basic trading fundamentals. This is why people say that the agent that you main doesn't really matter, because the things that provide the most value, anyone could do. At the end of the day, the most valuable thing you can do in an FPS game is learn how to efficiently and effectively take gunfights. But you also need to learn how to even get into those gunfights because a lot of you struggle with that as well. The thing you need to recognize is that as soon as the round starts, you're basically in a race to see if you can get value before your whole team gets themselves killed. This is a wild way to think about it, but it's really true. You need to be impactful in every single round. There's this common habit that players pretty much in every rank have though that results in their impact being pretty much decided by RNG. In the background, take a look at this clip from Mr. White landing a nasty ace. He absolutely decimated the team and I think that this clip really showcases that Mr. White is capable of winning gunfights. He's been practicing and improving a ton and if you compare this to what he initially looked like just a few weeks ago, it's an absolutely crazy improvement. But now let's look at another round from the exact same game. He ended up losing the game on defense, basically just because some rounds he would have a crazy impact, basically running the enemy team over, and then some rounds they just wouldn't push into him, or he would get smoked off and spawn and end up losing the round. If you play Sentinel, this probably sounds all too familiar. The enemy team just doesn't come to your site, so you're always playing retake. It just feels like there's nothing that you can do. But what if I told you there was an easy way that you could increase your impact by just changing where you choose to stand at the start of rounds? Listen to how I explain it here. Basically, the way that I describe it is that if you're right here, notice how you don't really gain much inherent value. Like you're sitting in spawn and like the enemies could go anywhere. They could come here, they could come here, they could come here, they could come here. But the moment that you push up and you're like playing in like this area, right? Um, now, if you're in B main with your turret, you can fight off of your turret. You know that they're not B main. They could be mid, they could be A, but they definitely can't be B main because we're there, you know? Um, and then if you are in B main, you can always push through and you can flank. So now it's like, once we're flanking, we know that they're not B main and they can't be B main like anytime soon, right? And now I have the opportunity to catch them off guard in mid because I walked all the way through. Um, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to play actively near the spawn barriers um, when you can. So that way you can get information. You can look to take fights because basically what ends up happening this whole defense is that you sit back in kind of like this region of the map and then you let your teammates take fights and they end up losing them and then you end up, end up losing the game and you weren't really able to do much. Um, specifically, once they start going mid a lot, they went mid basically the last six rounds on offense and they ended up winning. Um, what I would have done is like, there was a couple rounds where you're playing A and you're sitting like right here um, and your teammates are pushing up A main and you have some people pushing up B main. Um, what you could do is you could play here and you could look to get ready to fight mid. So that way, say for example, this guy collapses mid, you can fight with him and you can get this pinch, right? And say for example, this guy walks all the way through A main, you can fight with him and you can look for that pinch, you know? Um, so I just want you to get more involved in the action and look to take fights more, especially when you start losing and it feels like everything's kind of crumbling around you. Um, you're better than these guys. As you can see from that ace that you had, you kind of just like run at these guys and you kill everybody, um, which is sick 
And I think that you could totally do that more if you just played just a little bit more involved in the action and rather than hanging back here and spawning. I've presented this habit in videos before in other ways, just talking about playing close to the spawn barriers, but I've recently adapted it to just playing in more central regions of the map. You don't need to hug the spawn barriers and instantly start swinging players, and as a sentinel, that's not always the best decision anyway. When you're Killjoy, you do want to play off of your utility as much as you can, but you also don't want to be just sitting back doing nothing if your team is getting crushed. When you look at the best sentinel players in the game, they're not just sitting and spawn the whole match. They're actively looking to take fights with their teammates and have an impact. They're looking for flanks and trying to get involved in the action as fast as possible. You can't get involved in the action if you're constantly rotating through spawn. The more you play towards the middle of the map, the more involved in the game you will be. So the next time that you feel like you're not doing anything in the match, just go play towards the spawn barriers and react to the information that you get at the start of the round. If you don't hear anyone there, maybe try to flank. If you do hear people, probably back up and try to stall for rotates. But one thing is for sure, I promise if you start doing this, you'll start having more impact instantly. Be sure to subscribe because in the next episode, we're going to be talking about a piece of advice that is never fun to give players, but is also incredibly important if you're looking to climb fast. This episode, Mr. White was actually pretty stagnant, but it's not actually his fault. It has to do with a simple mistake that he's making that pretty much everyone makes. Currently though, he's on track for a double rank up, gaining nearly 36 RR a game though, so we're expecting some super awesome gains in the next episode. That won't go live for a week though, so if you want to catch the advice that caused this early, it's currently available in our Road to Diamond course, along with every other coaching session that we've done with Mr. White so far. You'll be able to follow along on the journey with Mr. White and apply the exact same advice that he was given to instantly see gains. In your case, you'll probably rank up even faster because Mr. White is actually a brand new player. So if you've been playing the game for a few acts already, you already have a head start. Don't just take our word for it though, we offer a rank improvement guarantee. So if you don't climb, you don't pay. Use the link below for a discount. And other than that, be sure to let me know if you guys enjoy this type of series so that we know to do more stuff like this in the future. We're having a lot of fun working with you guys to create the best content possible. So your feedback is really appreciated. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.